All right, so today we are doing part two of trying to get this vehicle ready uh, to paint and finalize. Now, like I was saying in the last video of this project, we're having transmission issues. I explained why in the last video, but basically this, this transmission is spent. We need to rebuild it. Can't do that. Can't find parts for it. It is 90 something years old. So basically we need to replace that transmission with a, with a much more common transmission, something that's uh, easier to find parts for. And that, I believe, I've been doing a bunch of research on transmissions and I believe a T90 transmission out of a CJ Jeep will work for this setup. Now, I'm on, on a bit of a time crunch because I have two collaborations set up for this month. The first collaboration, which is in six days, I am bringing the Grave Ninja over to the Redneck Rumble, which is a car show in Tennessee on the 11th and 12th of this month. And right now I'm trying to get the Grave Ninja ready for, for that and uh, trying to finish the hubs and spindles and all that kind of stuff. And the second collaboration is later this month and I'm bringing the CBR 1000 project and the Grave Ninja and I would really, really like to have this project finished and painted for the second collaboration and to be able to do that I need to have all the modifications that I need to do to this thing done and I have to have it disassembled ready for painting before I leave for the first collaboration in six days. So I kind of have a lot of work to do and not that much time to do it. Now as far as the transmission I'm kind of having a bit of a hard time finding a T90 transmission but Fortunately, I did a post on Instagram explaining what's going on and explaining, you know, uh, my predicament and somebody commented on Instagram and said, hey, I have a T90 transmission. It's yours if you want it. So huge shout out and huge thank you to John Richardson for giving me a T90 transmission. Turns out he works on a bunch of Jeeps. He's working on his CJ Jeep right now and he has a transmission that he's not using and he's like, it's yours if you want it. So, of course I'm saying yes. So huge thank you to him for making this possible because I couldn't find a, another transmission in time for this. Now, I can't wait for shipping. Shipping's gonna take about a week for the transmission to get here. I kinda need the transmission like immediately. So, we need to go pick this transmission up and it is seven hours away in West Virginia. So, yeah, we got to do a bit of a road trip to go pick up this transmission. Oh. Oh. That's a little sketchy. Here it is. I did have to drive 14 hours to pick this thing up, but can't complain, it was free. So again, huge thank you to John Richardson for giving me this. And uh, I, I know it looks way bigger, but it still has a bell housing on it, still has a transfer case. This is what we're after right here. So uh, let's disassemble it. And I wanna have a look inside to see what kind of condition this thing is in. So something I am just discovering is the bearing that goes on this side of the transmission, the output side, that holds the bearing in place and I did not know that when I was looking up T90 transmit. This is the hard part about doing this kind of stuff, about trying to 
just simply look at pictures on Google and try to figure out will it work for my very specific application while just looking at simple pictures. This is the hard part about this stuff. I, I, I can still make this work. I can still, I, I think I can still make this work. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult and require more machining. But I think, I think I can still make this work. So we were able to locate one of the holes pretty easily because the hole goes all the way through and we can just put a transfer punch on the other side and punch a hole onto the plate to where we can locate uh, where to drill the hole. But the other four holes on the transmission are tapped and I can't put a transfer punch through them. So it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge to, uh, to locate the other four holes to drill into this piece of plate. But I got a trick up my sleeve that I believe will work for this application.
Alright, so I located and drilled the other four holes, so now I can bolt this thing onto here. So the next step is I need to trim the fat around here. So I'm gonna bolt it on, mark with a sharpie around the edge onto here, and then cut off all the excess on this plate. So we trimmed the fat around the outside, but it's still a little too thick and still pretty heavy. So now we got to thin it out a little bit in the places where uh, we can thin it. I think I have an idea on how to do this a whole lot easier. Let me put this in the lathe. I'm kind of wondering if it would have been so much faster removing all that material with the lathe instead of the mill. The mill took, that took me, I want to say maybe three hours, three and a half hours, something like that. I wonder if it would have been easier with the lathe. Alright, we finished the backing plate for this transmission. That took a little while, wasn't really aware that I would have to make something like that, but it works, it's finished, it uh, doesn't add that much weight. I was able to take off a lot of material to lighten the weight of this. This transmission already weighs a ton, so we're not adding that much weight. Now, this thing's not completely done, we still need to add some type of a oil seal in between here and here, so there, because right now this bearing right here is not a non-sealed bearing. If we left it like this, oil would just pump out of this thing as we're driving it, so we do need to put a seal in between here to keep the oil in the transmission. But we can do that later. Right now, let's move on to working on the front. We need to figure out a way to add a sprocket to this right here. We're gonna do what we did last time with the original transmission, is just simply make a hub 
that slides onto these splines. Then we can weld the, the sprockets onto that hub. Now, before we make a, a, a hub that will fit this, I want to take off the original transmission because this looks very similar to the input of the original transmission on there. I want to take that thing off, take off the hub, and see if the hub that we made for the previous transmission will fit on the new transmission. So the new transmission is, you can see, a little bigger than this one, but this one has just a little bit, lo a lot longer of this. This one's not that long, and this one was a perfect, perfect three quarters, so a three quarter inch bearing could fit over this perfectly. This one, not so much, but I can simply just make a bushing that can slide over this that fits the bore of that, so that's not that, not that big of a problem. This one's seven and three quarters. This one's eight. So body size, roughly different. These are a little bit shorter, or this one's a little bit shorter than this one. And the tail is way shorter than the one on here. So, so yeah, hopefully this will work. Hopefully this, you know, they're very similar, very similar transmissions. They're just, you know, not exactly the same. Now, the moment of truth. Will the hub fit on the new input? Oh. 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 Oh, that, that works. Actually, it's a little bit loose. There's a little bit of play. So we don't have to make a new hub for this. It's a little loose on here. It's a little wiggly, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, for now, I can always remake it later on. I just need, I want to get this thing ready for the second collaboration this, this month. So now what we do need to do is make a splined hub that fits on this side because I doubt I, this is like hard as a rock. I doubt I can drill through it. I don't think I can weld to it. I could probably weld to it, but it's hardened and like soaked in oil. Anytime you weld on something that's soaked in oil, you have to burn the oil out, otherwise it's gonna the weld's gonna be like crap. So I don't wanna like, you know, just weld something to here and then, you know, bolt the sprocket under. I don't wanna do that. So what we need to do is we need to make a hub that fits onto these splines. That way we can get this sprocket right here onto this onto this shaft right here. So these are much bigger splines, so it's going to be a little bit easier because it's a bigger diameter, easier to get a tool in and out of there, but these are a lot wider, so it's going to be uh, a little tricky how to do this.
Alright, you gotta admit, this is pretty impressive that I can do this with my horizontal shaper. Fits perfectly on here. Uh, there is a tiny, tiny bit of runouts, like the 5,000 runout on here that I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, but it does fit on here perfect. The reason it's so big is because I'm not exactly sure where the sprocket's gonna have to be. The input and output on this transmission is like an inch and a half shorter than the original one, so I'm gonna have to compensate that by sticking the sprocket out on this side a lot further. So, how we're gonna get around uh, the bearing being open right here, so therefore oil doesn't leak out. I bought a couple of these. These are two inch inner diameter oil seals. I'm gonna machine at this side right here, so therefore this can fit on here. And then I'm gonna machine a disc or something that we can weld onto here, so therefore this will fit onto here. And that will hopefully take care of the issue of this having op being open and whatever, so therefore oil doesn't spill out. Now, I also made this. This is the mounting plate for this transmission. Didn't bother film making this, simply because we are only at this stage right here. We've only made, I think, three parts, and yet somehow I have managed to film, to fill two memory cards of footage. That is over 10 hours of footage just to get to this spot right here. So, I think the next step is uh, starting to mount this in the transmission. The reason I haven't uh, cut off any of the original mounts on the, on the frame is because I wanted to make sure that I can get all this stuff done and still have plenty of time to finish this. I didn't want to like be in the middle of this and realize like, oh wow, I have only I have three days before I have to leave and I'm nowhere near done. So I wanted to make sure I could finalize all this stuff in time for the collaboration. So and right now we have nine days. We still have nine days to get this done. So I think that's enough time. So I think let's start to cut out the original mounts and then weld in the new ones, so therefore we can mount the transmission in the frame. Alright, got the transmission installed. This thing fits into here. Got the input bearing on that side, figured out where the sprocket's gonna go and all that kind of stuff. So that's finalized on the input side. Now we gotta work on the output side. We gotta figure out exactly where the sprocket needs to go on this hub, machine this accordingly, and then we gotta figure out how to put a bearing on this side. So one thing I noticed is this hub has about six thou of runout. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
It's got about six thou of run out. So what I did was I marked the high spots on the hub here and here, and they're both six thou of run out. So how I'm going to get rid of that is I chucked this in my four jaw chuck and I simulated the run out in the four jaw chucks, so therefore I can take a couple passes on it to hopefully get rid of that run out. And just to make sure that it worked, I put it back on the output shaft of the transmission and checked it again just to make sure the run out is not there anymore. Boom, look at that. Still not perfect, but way better than what it was. All right, let's finish machining this thing. So we got the uh, input and output bearings on opposite sides, got that to work. So it's all able to move back and forth, all able to adjust and be, you know, has tensioning things that keep it in place. So now the next step we get to work on is reinstalling the shift linkage. Now I'm going to just set it up how it was originally. It didn't really work that great, but it did work. So let's just set it up uh, how it was. I cut off the original really long stick that this thing had and, and welded on this. This is the original one that was on the original transmission, so therefore we can just set it up as it was originally. I did have to cut off one of the pivoting points for the shift linkage, so we're going to have to weld that back on, readjust some stuff, so therefore we can get it to work for, for this setup. Alright, so the shifter works again. It's a, it's not that great. It's a little hard to find neutral and all that kind of stuff. That's neutral right there. The, the shift pattern is the same, which is awesome, so I don't have to remake this. Uh, right now, that is first gear. So that's first gear. That's reverse. And that is neutral. That's second. And then that's third, but it does it does work. Now I do want to eventually rebuild this and redesign this whole shift linkage to be a lot better because right now it's not really that great. Uh, instead of one sh one shifter fork where it's you know an H pattern, I want to change it to where it's two forks that just move back and forth. So. It'll be a lot easier to do the shift linkage that way, so basically straight up is neutral, then first, reverse, back to neutral, and then second, and then third. I, I want to do it that way. 
It would be two shifters right here instead of one, but I think it would be a lot easier to shift because it wouldn't be that H pattern and it wouldn't be as hard to find neutral. So, but we don't have time to do that in this video. Uh, we can do that some other time after the collaboration now. Everything works, uh, everything's installed, so I guess the next step right now is what we need to do is we need to uh, disassemble just this part right here, take the transmission out, so therefore we can weld everything together because I've been tacking everything in place. And then, we need, before we can reassemble the transmission back on, we need to take the transmission apart and replace some pieces on the inside. Alright, so last night I finished welding the frame together, all the new mounts for the new transmission, got, got that all welded together. Now before we reinstall the transmission, we, do, we first need to do a couple things to the inside of the transmission. I bought some new parts for it. I bought, I'm not entirely sure what this part's called, but it's, it's the part that shifts between second and third gear. Came with new synchros as well as I bought a new second gear for this transmission. The, the, the second gear in this transmission is not that, you can see that it's kind of worn down just a tiny little bit, but while I'm in here, might as well replace it because that was the one that was giving us trouble with the last transmission, so this thing wasn't that expensive. Also, I bought rebuild kit for this transmission. Came with uh, new bearings, new synchros, new needle bearings, new wear washers, all that kind of stuff as well as uh, new gaskets for this transmission. So, let's take it apart, replace the parts that we're replacing, and then reassemble it, and then we can reassemble this back on the frame. Alright, so I definitely didn't completely rebuild this thing. Basically, all I did was replace second gear and replace the synchros on the inside. Now, I bought this on eBay. It wasn't really that expensive. And when I first took this thing out of the package to take a look at it, I'm like, this thing looks really cheap. And I remembered it wasn't really that expensive on eBay. This is the synchro for the new one on eBay. This is the original synchro in the transmission. Look at the teeth different. Look at the size difference of the teeth. The new ones are like half the size. Plus this thing just makes, this feels like super cheap Chinese pot metal. They didn't, oops. They didn't even bother to deburr the insides of the splines. Look at that. That's, yeah, I did not feel comfortable putting this cheap eBay part in this transmission. So basically all I did was replace second gear which, this is the original second gear in the transmission. This wasn't really that bad. I just wanted to replace it anyway. And uh, I'll also replace the synchros that I bought, for, that I got from the rebuild kit. I mainly bought this rebuild kit for the gaskets and the new needle bearings. I also replaced the needle bearings for this right here and I didn't bother doing anything with the, with the bottom gear on there. Didn't want to take that off. So, now, last night, I finished making, the, I didn't bother filming this, I made this. This basically just holds in the oil seal. Next thing we need to do is we need to mount this onto here, and then mount the hub onto the spline, so therefore we can get this thing centered up perfectly, and then we have to weld this onto here, just like that. I did, I did chuck this back in the lathe and took off a lot more material thin it out a little bit more and uh, get rid of that mach those ma machining mistakes that I made right there and uh, you know made it made the finish look a lot better so once we get this thing welded together then we can reassemble it put some oil in this and then put it back on the frame
So I had to drill a hole in the top of this just so I can put a pin in here for the, for the nut. Alright, so transmission is installed, works, shifts to all the gears, it's uh, properly, uh, the chains are properly tensioned and everything, and it, it should, should work. Now, we're not done. We are not done with this thing. We still need to install the new radiator that I bought for this. Also the big, bigger radiator fan that I bought for, which is actually the radiator is uh, right, right in the corner. So, like I said in the last video, this radiator is going to require a lot of modification to get it to work for this application, which means a lot of aluminum welding, which I don't really enjoy, so, but we have to get it done, so let's, let's do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, definitely not my prettiest aluminum welds. For some reason, this was just fighting me the entire time welding this. But uh, I, did a I did do a pressure test just to make sure that these horrible looking welds aren't leaking. And luckily, they weren't. So, that's good. So, now, next step is we need to put the radiator fan on. And then we can install this on the frame.
So we need to test this thing somehow, just to make sure that the secondary transmission works and doesn't pop out of any gears. So basically this is the only test that we can do right now, is just drive back and forth right here and uh, just make sure that the new transmission works. I'm finally getting a little smarter and closing the doors every time I do this. So therefore I don't have to uh, clean out the shed every time. Yeah. All right, so it seems to work. Seems to stay in gear. The radiator definitely uh, works really well. It didn't even have the fan on it. Didn't even get a little, didn't even get to temperature. So uh, that's, that's good. Now, as far as the transmission, that's pretty much the only, as much as we can test it right now. And it seems to work fine, Doesn't didn't pop out of gear. There was one moment uh, when I turned the camera off and I was trying to back into, into, the, uh, into the shed. I was trying to put it in second gear and it, it would not go into second gear. It would go into third, go into first, and then I tried second gear and then it, would, then it went in it. So I don't know what that was. Hopefully that's nothing, but... Uh, as far as staying in gear, it does seem to be working, and it, from the little test that we could do, it seems to work. So Now, I didn't film it, but I did buy a Dynojet Power Commander 5 for this engine. I was able to stuff it in the, uh, and tuck it in the wiring mess that I have on top of the engine. Uh, just because, let's, let's be honest, this engine's never really ran that great. It's always broken up in the higher RPMs, and it's always been a little uh, hesitant on the throttle. And I haven't, I haven't tuned it yet. I was going to do that in this video, but I, this video is long enough. I need to end this video. I haven't even tuned it yet, and it's already running a lot better. It's way more responsive on the throttle, so that's really good. And this thing is now mostly ready for the collect, which is we are cutting it close. I am leaving in three days this collaboration so we are definitely cutting it close with finishing this vehicle well, now I'm not sure if I've told you guys the whole the the, pl the collaboration which he wanted me to keep a, a secret for the first couple months just because he didn't want a bunch of people showing up while we're there which is understandable but uh, basically what we're doing the plan is uh, me Dirt Gear TV and possibly Jimbo Slice is we are all going down to Durham Town for a week. Now that was the original plan. Plans have slightly changed because while I was at the Redneck Rumble, John from Cars and Cameras texted me and told me, hey, we're having a go-kart race uh, at my place. Basically same thing that we had, that same thing that we did last year. Uh, we're having a go-kart race on the 26th of this month and I was supposed to leave for Durham Town on the 25th. So yeah, that kind of, uh, you know, interferes a little bit, but now there's no way I'm missing the cars and cameras race, so there's a slight change of plans with what we're doing. Basically, on the 25th and 26th, I'll be, at, I'll be at cars and cameras place for the race, and then on the 27th, I will leave for Durham Town. I'll have two and a half days at cars and cameras place and three or four days at Durham Town, and that should be enough, and I'll be able to do both basically. Now what that also means is I need to bring all everything for both collaborations. I definitely, I'm definitely bringing this for Durham Town. That's why I've been getting this thing ready is for Durham Town. I also really want to bring the Grave Ninja because I heard that Durham Town has drag racing, which 
that thing should do really because that's ideally the grave ninja it, that's what it's designed for going very fast in a straight line in the dirt that is why I really want to bring the Grave Ninja to drag race that thing. And also, I want to bring my dirt bike because I haven't ridden that thing yet. And I want to ride it. And I need to bring a, a yard cart for the Cars and Cameras collaboration. So I need to somehow fit four vehicles in my truck and trailer. So that is going to be interesting to figure out how to get all that stuff to uh, fit in my truck. And hopefully my truck can haul all this stuff. Anyway, as far as this video, this thing is almost ready. There's a couple more things I need to do to it, like tune it. As well as, I need to clean this thing, it's a little muddy. And uh, I do want to move the mirrors. These mirrors, they're not in that great a location, I need to move them down because they work fine unless you're going around a corner. If you're going around a corner, you just can't really see, so it's, it, that position sucks. So I need to move them further down, but I'll do that later. So, as far as this video, I have managed to fill four memory, I'm now filming with my fifth memory card with this video, which each memory card that I have holds five and a half hours of footage. So I want to say that I've filmed maybe 20, 22 to 23 hours of footage for this video. So yeah, this video is going to be a little long. So just be aware of that. But uh, anyway, I got to end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So, I just realized that I surfaced the wrong side of the plate. I surfaced this side and I need to do this side. This is the side that is bolting onto the transmission. And this is the side, the underside, that needs to have the smooth surface. And... <sighs> Yeah, I just love wasting time. Just love making everything harder. So yeah, half a day wasted on this piece. This is the original piece, and I machined the wrong side. I started drilling the hole for it, and then I realized, oh, I'm doing the wrong side. And I tried to save it by just flipping it over, and then machining this side, but then it's like, well, I'm, I don't need it machined on both sides. I already started drilling the hole, and... I decided, I, I probably could have just salvaged this, machined this side, kept going, but I decided to just make another piece of plate, which, uh, yeah, took me an entire day just to get it to this point, so this is half a day wasted on this piece of plate, so that's awesome. Oh boy. This big engine grinder always tips the breaker because I'm running the lights and the grinder on the same breaker, so it's a little much. So. Oh, wow. That moves a lot. Holy crap. Ah. Dang it. Well, there went that cutter. This is so much material I am having to remove off of this thing. So the cutter keeps moving. Something keeps moving and it keeps going down. I keep cutting deeper than, I, than this surface right here. And I don't know what's moving. At, at first I forgot to tighten the head. So I tightened it, it's tight, and now there's something else moving, and I just cut way deeper. What is moving? What keeps moving? So I was doing so well with consistency all throughout here, and then I got to here, the last part, and man, I had some trouble with this. Something just kept getting, um, like, moving down, that is horrid. Look at that. Ah, oh, man, that just screams rookie right there. And then, you know, wasn't great through here. Kept moving down. I think I was getting impatient and taking off, like, a lot of material. And it kept, like, sucking the cutter down. Or something kept moving down every pass. 
and I kept having to move it back up. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad. That's not great. That is absolutely horrible. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take an angle grinder to that and flatten it all out, make it not look like a rookie did it. So, but uh, it's definitely, definitely a lot, lot lighter than it used to be. Well, this isn't really working that well. Alright, so last night I was cutting this giant chunk of steel, and it was taking forever last night, getting late, and I'm like, ah, I'll finish it in the morning. So I turned it off, and there was a huge arc, and a bunch of smoke came from right around here. So I unplugged it last night. This morning I plugged it back in. I'm going to turn it on. And see what happens. See what happens. Oh. Uh. That's not good. If it's arcing to itself, then it should trip the breaker, right? Uh, the motor still works. I think it's just the on-off switch. Oh, the wires have melted together and have arced. <laughs> there's some burned, like this is unplugged, right? Yeah, it's unplugged. There's some burned electronics right here. Oh, wow. These have just, these have melted off. This thing's gotten so hot. It's just melted off. So the way I have this thing wired up, uh, I have these little wires going from the positive of the big wire, going through this small wire to the on off switch, going back to the motor and that's what shuts off. So when the motor's on, the current is running through these small wires, heating them up and causing them to melt. Yeah, I'm not an electrician, so I don't know. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, that's, uh, that's not good, so I need to get thicker wires. And I run this thing for kind of a long time because I have to cut this huge round stock. So, and last night when I unplugged it, this, this, which I plug into the wall, this was hot. Or not hot, it was warm. Warm to the touch, so... This, I think this motor just draws a ton of current or volts or one of one of the things that makes wires melt. So I don't know. I don't know anything about electronics. Yeah, I'll admit. So I'm going to find some thicker wires to put on here. I'm going to replace it and we'll see if that fixes it. Alright, so I replaced it with some thicker wire, the same gauge as the wire that's going in, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, plugging in. Okay, nothing's blown up yet, so we're good there. Let's flip the switch and see what happens. It's good! It works! No sparks, no smoke. We're good. Let's finish cutting this thing. Still don't want to touch that. <laughs> 